guys, John here. Um, it's another video. Um, another quick one about um, this topic. Um, i kind of given a lot of thought in recent how I, in recent years on how on how and this I've been giving this topic a lot of thought and um, it's just how I approach well, at least now how I approach like dungeon building and adventure building um and that is excuse me um that's playing with my with like creature intelligence or monster intelligence and what I mean by that is say you have this this stronghold it could be a dungeon it could be a fort on a hill whatever and say you have goblins there, okay? And kind of this, kind of how the adventure goes is the players obviously are tasked, the PCs are tasked with taking out these goblins. Now, how I think how some of like unexperienced new newer DMs would handle this and how I know I handled it when I was new was they went to this fortress and they started an encounter. It basically became if you've ever played Final Fantasy, you know where it's like you go across the map, do encounter and then they're all lined up beautifully and they fight, you know. That's all I did it now it's now I'm taking liberties with this because obviously it's not all um and what I'm saying is that sh shouldn't happen one the game really doesn't allow for that without with a lot of combat rules especially in like third fourth edition with all like the miniature rules and battle grid rules they have that stops that what I really mean is not just even that, but, um, you know, if they're attacking a fortress, you know, first of all, the goblins would have a war band. They didn't have something. They probably would, realistically, you know, there'd be a lot of goblins there. There wouldn't just be five goblins, because five goblins are really... But yeah, there'd probably be more, um, for an example from the first edition guide, they use kind of like 40. For every 40 goblins, yeah, there's like 40 goblins. Um, and that's probably a warband. That's probably actually a good size for a warband. Um, in kind of a medieval sense, even if they were just brigands. Um, because they could do some damage. Um, that's really what, what combat was back then. In medieval areas, which is, was the size. Um... And, you know, the brute, the raw strength that you have. And so with that, you know, there's leaders, you know, they would have a leaders and they've had, a, the leaders have assistants. You know, that's minutia that's in this book. But what I'm also getting at is this large warband. You have this large warband of goblins. Now, and they're at this fort. Well... Now they'd be manning the battlements at the fort, so they'd be fighting from cover. They'd be, if they have like catapults or ballistas, they'd be using it. Um, so you have that. You also have traps. You know, they they'd set up traps. Like if it's a fortress on a hill, you know, they'd have a moat there. They or they they'd have something on the road or something blocking the passage to get up. You know, because it's slowing down. It's it, it's attrition. Um, stopping the enemy. <laughs> That's just one way of doing it. Um, or if they're in a dungeon complex or something, you know, maybe the floor of the dungeon's like dirt. You know, maybe it's a cave. So like they have trap doors with that have spikes that are spike pits or like, bungee sticks, they're like they're like bungee sticks, you know. Or, you know, they have arrow slits in the walls or something, you know. It's just, it's something that I've kind of incorporated um, into kind of my games. Just out of kind of a, you know what, the goblins would do it. And plus, it makes the encounter a lot more fun. Because now it's not just, I kill the orcs. It's now, 
The orcs are firing at me. It's just, where are they? You know, okay, I have to get up to the battlements, or I have to find an entrance to get to the arrow slots, or find a way, like, throw, like, alchemist fire into the aspects, or, like, throw something. Um... But yeah, this type of planning and kind of idea of, like, tactically... It really makes the encounter a lot more fun. And it makes... And I'm not gonna lie. d d encounters... Like, when you get to, like... 4th edition... And even, even maybe in, like, 3rd edition. But I know, I remember, you know, I would be running 4th and... The encounters would take a long time. Especially if you had... A lot of monsters. If you had a lot of goblins, they kind of take a lot of time. However, if you have kind of elements in this encounter, like an occupation, like like, no, not an occupational hazard. Although it could be an occupational hazard for an adventurer. But if you have like an environmental hazard, like if you have some sort of like gas around, or like flame jets, you know, something, some, some something that kind of stops it or happens all of a sudden, it makes it a lot more interesting. Um, just a lot of things are a lot more fun that way. Um, and once you kind of start doing this as a DM, once you think tactically, your players, most like most of the time, and hopefully, will start thinking tactically as well. Because if, if those goblins are or kicking my my ass, then you know I've got to you know work hard. It's like now I got to come up with a way to expose that, you know. And if that's having the wizard throw a fireball, or like if that's like not fireball, but if like like put throwing oil around a dungeon corridor and then stepping outside of the cave and uh, having the wizard throw a fireball into the cave and lighting it all on fire, that, that's the way to do it. That's a perfectly valid point. Um, and that's really how you can do flask of oil. But yeah. Um, yeah, really, um, closing notes on this video for DMs. Think tactically. You know, think, you know, don't make monsters just goofy bipeds. Because they're not. I, mean, I use the interpretation of goblins. Maybe goblins is, is a wrong thing to do. But um, hobgoblins, the more militaristic type of goblin. They definitely, definitely to a T um, would have some sort of defense, like some sort of trap around their encampments because it's what they do, you know. Um, kobolds. Kobolds are often, you know, they're, they're like this, you know, they're often, they're, half the time they're the joke of RPGs. Yeah, it's true. They have like one of the four hit points, and one of them doesn't do damage. Now, 50 kobolds, and they do damage. And yeah, um, but anyway, yeah. Just think tactically, you know, make encounters memorable, make them, you know, make them fun. You know, a lot of things with like the D20 style of games, like third, fourth edition, is combat becomes a slog, and it just, it becomes like, like I've seen player, I've seen so many players do this. I've seen so many, so many of my players just go, okay, um, yeah, I use my atwell attack or yeah, I sling my sword. Like it's not fun. It's like you know you can always say, well, narrate your action. Well, it's like I'm not gonna. The player won't. The player's not if the the encounter is not doesn't give off an energy. If they can't feel the energy of the DM with this encounter, they're, they're not gonna do it. So, you know, yeah, uh, you, I might do, an, I'm probably going to do another video on, on other ways you can make combat encounters more memorable and fun and more interesting. But yeah, just think of ways, first of all, really to kind of get driving what type of defenses they'd have. Like, maybe it's a trench or something, or a ditch that they could jump out of, maybe. But yeah, um, as you can tell, I could probably talk, you know, I could talk a hundred hours about this subject. But obviously I don't have that. But anyway, yeah, um, so, to reiterate, closing, closing statement, think tactically, 
Let me know what you think about this. Give me some examples of how you handle this in your game, if you do it all. If you don't, I encourage you guys to start thinking about it, because it's really fun and it makes your... It opens up a new level. It opens up another level of your play. Even if you're not doing, like, a super tactical miniatures game, you could always narrate this. Don't, don't tell me you can't. You know, any type of storyteller can. You know, you can actually have fun with it, too, because they come out... You can, you can have fun with it, but that, I'll do that in another video. But yeah, you know what? I'm John, happy gaming, and please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe.